Welcome to My Life. We're honored to have Bob Butler with us today. Uh, Bob currently lives in Lake Orion. He's been there for 41 years. Prior to that, he lived in Pontiac. He was born in Iowa. He's a member of the local American Legion and the Lake Orion Methodist Church and the Detroit Escort Association, which is a Navy association. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, he was a mechanic for 12 years, self-employed. He was with General Motors as a technician for 30 years. He vo has volunteered with the Red Cross for over 30 years and the local fish organization for 25. And he's a veteran of World War II. I don't think we have anything to talk about, Bob, do you? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, at the end of all this, you were telling me that there's there's something special that either just happened or is going to happen in Frankenmuth. Tell me more well, about that. Well, we're up there, we go around, every town's got a little ceremony place or a veteran's place, you know, or something, or a monument or something. And we um, went there and they had a ceremony and just dedication that day to this monument, and it's a monument for war, war veterans. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a regular had guys you know, shooting their rifles and uh, regular flag flying. It was about an hour ceremony. And then we went to, all of us went to dinner in Frankenmuth that day. And uh, all, we were all from different places. A lot of people from Livonia and up north. And uh, they had a pretty good group. Good showing, huh? Uh -huh. That's and, good. And uh, we donated to a bell, some little town donated some kind of a bell. And we're going to have this ceremony this fall over there. It's going to be dedicated, and everybody. It's a, of course, they got money from everybody. And it's something. But it's little, some little town. I can't even think about it. Very nice. So we're all going to go. We wore not our uniform, but we wore a shirt like that, and my hat. And uh, everybody has to wear black pants and a white shirt. Now, uh, Bob, I know you're a gentleman in your 90s, and the first I, I didn't meet you before I got this card. Uh -huh. I got this card. And it says, if you need help, call the butler. Uh -huh. Explain that. <laughs> well, butler is a word is a guy that serves people, you know. Right. And I always I thought I'd just use that as a word, you know, because butler was always serving somebody, you know, and as a, as a, a servant to people, you know. And uh, I always thought I'd just use that. And, of course, I, when I first put the card out, I was working for Face Then. And uh, I was taking people to the hospital and taking them to doctor's appointments and giving out food. It was only about 25 people working at that time. Now, there's, I don't know how many people working for it, probably 70 or 80 people working for it now. And it's really progressed. And I, of course, I quit doing that, and then I got a job with the Red Cross. And I've been going there for 30 years. You don't let yourself get bored, do you? No, 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 no. I'm never home. I mean, I'm very lucky. I'm mobile. And I can move around, and, um, and and I have a lot of friends. Of course, friends are getting fewer and fewer, you know. I'd like to uh, go back to your days in Iowa for a moment, if I could. You were born in Iowa, yes, is that uh, correct? What uh, city do you recall? Centerville. Well, Seymour is a little town so small that you would never recognize it, but just pretty close to the Missouri line. Okay. And uh, that's where it was located, and not too far from Mississippi. Your dad owned a farm? Yes, uh -huh. and uh, there was my daughter and my, my sister and uh, my mother and my dad, just the four of us. You've got quite a history there, don't you? Well, I was there for 13 years. But I mean, were you, weren't your grandparents there as well? Yeah, my great-great-grandpa homestead stood there years ago. I what, got, do you know approximately what year that would have been your great no, great? No, I didn't. I got all that information at home. I mean, that I, would have been the early 1800s, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, uh huh. Because he was, it would be. One, two, three, at least three generations, maybe four, you know. And would he have been the first to have set foot in this country? I would country? say yes, uh, as far as we know. Uh -huh. What uh, country would he have come from? Well, I think they thought they'd come from Pennsylvania. Well, okay, from, oh, okay, so they lived in Pennsylvania yeah, first. Yeah, was, was but, American all the time. English, I think it was English at one time. But you'd have to go back quite way, a ways way yeah, to uh -huh. figure that out. Yeah, uh -huh. but... Uh, so and then he had, uh, like I say, he had the old man, which I I knew him as a big bearded man. Of course, them days, grandpas you, wasn't grandpas. I mean, they never paid any attention to the kids. They had so damn many kids, you know. <laughs> How many children did your grandfather have? Well, he had. Now, my granddad only had two boys, but his dad had 
uh, six, six boys and four girls. And that's the reason they got so many of them. That's what they, they built Butler School. It was a certified school. And was it your great-great-grandfather who built the school? Yes. Uh huh. And then when he had all these kids, and uh, he had a big old house. He used to have a porch all the way around the house, two floors. But he had to have, and because he had, he was taking care of all that farm too. He said. So you're okay. You knew your great grandfather. I I guess he was. I don't remember. I can't really say I'd seen him, but he was an old guy with a beard, and I just you know I wasn't really interested in things like that, and I don't remember. Evidently, I don't think his, his wife was alive, but he was. This was on your father's side? Yes. What about on your mother's side? Did you? Her parents was uh, um, farmers, but they had moved to town. And that's and then the town, is, they had electric lights. And my farm, we had no electric lights or no running water or anything, you know. But uh, uh, my mother was a city girl. She and my dad both went to school. He graduated and everything from a small school. I mean, from the high school, they had to go to high school. After the ninth grade, they had to go to go to in the town to to a race to mm -hmm. the high school. Now, this would have been in the 1920s that you were born. Yeah, 1923. So you've got to take two. My dad was born in 01, I think, or right 900, and my granddad was, I think, in like in the 70, 1870. So right. the next generation would be another 25 years from there. I mean, you know. What do you remember about the first school that you went to? Well, it was a regular country school, and all grades, first grade set in the front row, and the second grade set in the second row, and up to the eighth grade. Of course, there's only, there was probably, uh, probably eight or 10 kids in school. I mean, my generation was getting a little bit smaller, some of the people that left, you know. But, uh, but um, the, the teacher lived at our house, how could you be not making bad? <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah, because they had to hire a teacher, one teacher. Uh -huh. And a teacher, a woman teacher, couldn't be married. You couldn't hire a, a, a woman teacher because and I had a man a couple of years, and I had most of the time women teachers. Because I went up to seventh grade, and I, we moved. Uh -huh. My daughter, my sister, went to high school, and she rode a pony to school. And I rode my pony to school, both of us, when we were going to country school. Now, right around the time that you started school was when the Depression set in. Yes, uh-huh. What do you remember about that happening? Well, I can't read because I didn't, it didn't mean anything to me because we ate good and we lived good. I mean, you know, in the Depression, I knew it was bad because my granddad used to come out and see my dad and they'd say, tell how bad things was, was, you know. But we was never hungry or never desolate, you know, or anything like you see some it's, people. It's and, that, I've heard that over and over again. Uh -huh. If you have to go through a depression, it's good to be a farmer. Yeah, yeah maybe so. <laughs> well, you could always have Because you always food, have yeah. food. Yeah. We're going to take a little break right now, but we're going to move on from there in just a minute. So okay. stay with us with Bob Butler. Okay. Welcome to American Legion in Oxford for the best fish on Fridays. That's right, from noon to 8.30, you can get the best walleye in Michigan. You can get walleye, baked cod, chicken strips, baked potatoes, and more. On the hall side of the Legion, oh, hello there, friends. You can have 12 friends on a table, any one of the best military museums in Michigan. And the dining side, oh, hello again. More comfortable with many four seat tables and a couple of five seaters. Now on Friday, we have usually have about four to 500 of best friends for our fish. Carry out, you bet. We have 50 to 60 carry outs at the post. We have some young friends with the birthdays and some of our best seniors at the post. Oh so yeah, waitresses, they go like a track waitress to get your food. If you have never enjoyed our secret famous walleye at the Legion, come on in every Friday from noon to 8.30 at the American Legion Post, 108 on 130 East Rainer Road, Oxford. Hi, I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Terry Stiles. Did you know that Charter Channel 191 and AT&T Channel 99 are the only television stations you can find all the events and news just for you? Oxford News This Week is your news closer to home. Catch us right here weekdays at noon, 6.30 and 11 p.m. and weekends at noon and 11 p.m. See, See you, you there. there. We're here with Bob Butler talking about your school days, Bob. You said, was it, was it a one-room schoolhouse yeah, you one went room. to yeah, initially? Yeah, yeah, and we had outhouses, two, one, girl, one for the girls, one for the boys, and we had a 
place to put her pony in a garage, in a in a barn, and we had to go out and feed it at noon. And uh, of course, we stayed in school all day. We had a fire back there. The teacher, when she came in, she had to build a fire for the school. And uh, what wintertime. did you what did you do for fun in grade school? Well, there was so damn many cousins. You know, I mean, you we, we had a lot of fun. We all rode ponies. All had horses. And, and uh, I had a little Shetland pony first. And I got big enough. My dad got me a bigger pony. And that's, we rode them things around and we worked. I mean, we, you know, if you got big enough, we had to feed the chickens and feed the pigs and, and bring the cows in. My dad had a dog that he, it was just his dog. It wasn't, I never had a dog, but he was his, and he talked to that dog and he'd go out and get the cows and bring it in. And, and uh, how many acres did he have? 180, 180. Well, that was enough to keep you busy. Oh, yeah. Well, it was, put, we planted corn and, uh, wheat, beans, and they all had to be planted and all had to be harrowed. I mean, so I imagine you had to get up pretty early in the morning to do yeah, chores and stuff. Seven day a week job. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. What do you remember about family celebrations back in those well, days? Well, I just remember that uh, uh, them days, you know, you didn't pay much attention, I guess, in life because we used to have big butler picnics, you know. And I remember the guys used to all go down to the barn, who was their house there was at, and they'd be down there, I think they was drinking, and they'd, be, they'd shoot in the barn, they'd be, shoot rifles in the barn, targets. And uh, women would always be up at the house, and, and, uh, and we'd have, uh, like, in the summertime, when the thrasher would come, well, every farmer had to, or all the neighbors come in and, uh, and help do the harvest, you know. Now, you had mechanized equipment, right? Did you have a tractor and so forth? No, no tractor. It was all horse drawn. Horse drawn. Wagons and a, fur and a cultivator and it was all. Were you in farming when the transition happened to mechanization? Well, the big Did your dad get a tractor eventually? No, he never got one. Never he, got it was one. just in that edge right there, and of course he couldn't afford one, but he was just getting money where he could buy one because everybody was started to get a tractor. One, one, one guy got a tractor, everybody got one, you know. Did you find that? Neighbors helped out each other a lot. Yes, yes. Uh, everybody knew each other, and uh, we and uh, everybody. If you had a problem, and and they had to help each other, you know, if you had something, and uh, of course, uh, they had to be close because everybody. Uh, we had colts every spring. You know, and what? Uh, and my dad was that was kind of, kind of fun because we get to play the pony. All you know, we spoil it, and then we, then you had to, he'd had to start to put it to work, you know. And that was always fun to see it because they'd raise heck when they start putting harness on them, you know. But uh, I'm really telling some funny I mean, no. stories, not maybe. Not, You're not. fine. You know, it, I, I, what's going through my mind is I, I heard an interview of my great uncle who was a farmer. Uh -huh. And he was around during the transition of, you know, going from horse drawn uh -huh. to mechanization. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the interviewer asked him, what'd you think about that? And he said, I didn't like it. And the interviewer asked him why. And he said, because I didn't see as much of my neighbors anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, uh, but anyway, um, did you go to high school in that same schoolhouse? or? No, it went to eighth grade, and then I had to go to town. Okay. Like my sister, now she, went, she was a couple of years ahead of me. And when she got to eighth grade, she graduated. You know, graduation, you're just, you're just done. And then she had, next year, she had to go to high school. And they had a big, all the county went to that high school. What was didn't. the name of the high school you went to, do you remember? Oh, Seymour High. Seymour High. And the paper was a Herald. The Herald. The I Seymour got a, Herald. Got a, yeah, I got a, got a card from him. Because I went back there two or three years ago. Did and, you really? Yeah, that's what Was I'm there a class me. reunion? No, no, hell no. There wasn't. <laughs> there wasn't <no> plan, <laughs> well? I didn't have a class reunion in Iowa. I mean, you know, that was, you just went, you just when the eighth grade was over with, you went to high school, you know. There was no, and it was the graduation, because I didn't graduate, my sister didn't either. But I've always wondered about my dad graduating and my mother, and uh, I don't remember ever asking them what they'd done or, you know, I mean, yeah. and, uh, and of course my dad, farmers then quit, you know, quit school early. But I mean, uh, and, uh, during harvest and stuff like that, they had to be, Quit and come out Were your there. parents encouraging about getting an education? No, I don't think it was ever. You know, that was never discussed too much. I mean, just we went to country school and that was yeah. it. Yeah. You know? 
And uh, mm. but they they had graduated, so I knew they would we'd be graduating too. You know. When did you drop out of high school? Well, I was in uh, going to graduate in January. They had graduation in Pontiac. They had two classes to graduate, and I was, and I, they held me back a year when I come into Michigan, and so I was, I was, nineteen when I went in service. So when I, that's when I. Okay, so, down. let's go back a little bit here. You were in Pontiac when you graduated from high school. Let's talk about the move from Iowa to Pontiac. Uh -huh. What brought that about? Well, my dad wanted to come and he come ahead of time and he knew somebody up here, you know, a friend of a friend, you know, told him about it up here. And you were 13 at that time, at you said? At that time, yeah, uh-huh. And uh, he come up here and my mother stayed at home. So this would have been around the late 1930s, yeah. roughly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he come up here and he got a job pretty quick. Was it a situation where he was just tired of farming and wanted to find yes. something and, better. I mean, he wasn't so bad. He was kind of a born born fire farmer. But my mother, she was kind of the driver that would, that would push the thing. As I find out so later she, in life, I mean, you know, she said, "You know, honey, I'm really tired yeah, of this. Yeah. We got to do something uh, she else." She raised turkeys and she done had a big garden, you know, and everything. A woman's work was never done, you know. Sure. The only thing my daughter got away with a lot, but my sister. Because she never had to do any farm work, she had to stay in the house. I mean, my dad never let her do any, like you see so many women, you know, working hard in the barn. But he never let my daughter, my sister. How did you feel about that when you got wind of the fact you might be moving to Michigan? I didn't, didn't know it. I mean, I knew it, but I didn't. I knew my dad was gone for three or four months, and then he had to come back and sell his farm and. Uh, and uh, he didn't sell a farm. He sold all his equipment, equipment and the farm and the stock and everything, and the horses and my pony and all that stuff. So he didn't sell the farm. What did no, he do? No, he, my dad, granddad, still tech, kept. He was alive, so he's. Oh. And he had a brother too, but he didn't want anything to do with it. So my granddad got the farm back again, and then he rented it out. I see. Now, that was his income. Okay, you know. so. On the day your mom and dad said to you, come on, we're moving to Michigan, uh -huh. what went through oh, your I mind? I thought it was a big deal. I got to see Woodward Avenue, and I thought that was the biggest thing I've ever seen in my life. You were going <laughs> near a big city. Yeah. And we, play, we moved around like a, like a uh, gypsy, I guess. We lived in Birmingham for a while, and then we lived over in Pontiac, two or three different places. And then we finally bought, bought a house in Pontiac on Perry Street there. In late 1930s Birmingham, what kind of a place did you live in? Well, we didn't know there was any difference. You know, we didn't know it was a high class or, you know, it didn't mean anything to I went to Adams High School, Adams Junior High in, in Birmingham. The school's still there, but I don't, know mm -hmm. it, I don't think it's active anymore. Adams School. Now, how I remember that, I can't remember anything else. But, uh, and I was only went to school there probably couple of three months then we moved again and I went to two different schools in Pontiac even before we yeah. got situated you know okay we're gonna pause now for a brief break but uh, we'll be back with Bob Butler to talk more about his high school adventures right after this Canine Stray Rescue does just that. Rescue stray dogs for new families. But they need your help. Become a volunteer at Canine Stray Rescue League of Michigan. Take dogs for walks, help them socialize with others, and help them get adopted. Fill out an application and help a family add a new member today. Back with Bob Butler from Lake Orion, talking about your high school experiences. All right, you were in Birmingham for a short period of yeah, time. Yeah, junior high, and then I went to Eastern, I mean Washington, in Pontiac, and I went to Eastern in Pontiac. We moved, we moved, and I had to go to a different school. Now, there was stuff going on besides you and your family moving during that time. The World, world War II was getting fired up. 
you know, but it wasn't that in my era, not not that time. Okay. I mean, I, we didn't know about it. I mean, we knew about it, but it it, it was way, way away. You know, it was Europe a little ways was a away, yeah. Away. Yeah, it took a while. Uh huh. Um, what school did you go to in Pontiac? Well, I went, like I say, I went to uh, Eastern and Washington. That's two different high schools, two mm -hmm. different junior highs. Then I went to Pontiac High after I got What are some of the things you remember doing for fun when you were in high school? Played a lot of ball. My mother my, had a bicycle and I'd throw my glove on my bike and go play ball someplace. And then she didn't care whether I come home till dark, I guess. You know, that was the way, the way it was. A lot of kids, a lot of kids. And uh, just a good neighborhood with more fun. Just Did you meet your wife when you were in high school? No. Not was later? I was in service. Yeah, okay. She was, uh, but uh, no, I didn't, but, but she wasn't, but no, it was just a good childhood. I had a good childhood, and we didn't, we didn't have a lot of money then. I mean, you know, I mean, getting just buying a house, and it now was you had a tough time. It was kind of tough times. Did you say that your your uncle was already here? Did, was no, he, not an uncle. It was just a friend. A friend. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so you had no other relatives in town No, no relatives time. up here. Uh -uh. I think that there was some far-fetched ones. I mean, might have been some of the butler's kinfolks or something, you know. Uh -huh. But they were different, different named. Now, did you go all the way through high school? Well, I quit when I, I was getting about ready to graduate. I would have graduated in February, but I went in the service. So it was the military yeah. that took you away yeah, from uh -huh. school. Well, I'd kind of quit before because I knew I was going to go in service. Was the war going then? Uh, no, not at that time. But when I went in, it was, it was of course, they attacked it in 41, and I went in 43. But, you know, when it first happened, nobody really knew it was going to be that bad. I remember when it happened, because I was in Detroit going to a movie when they announced December 7th, you know. And, but it didn't really soak into anything. I mean, we didn't think it was going to happen the way it did happen, you know. What year did you go into the service? 43. It had been so, going on for a year. Now, okay. So, uh, for two years, really, in fact. What was going through your mind when you went in? Well, we didn't, just young and we wanted to go, you know. It was something else to yeah. do. Well, I wouldn't say something else. That's what everybody was doing. All the young guys was going in service, you know. Well, it was an that's important what, and, event. And, yeah, and we didn't know what was getting into, but we got a good lesson. But, I mean, uh, but um, people don't realize that when I got wrote in my article here, I mean, you know, when I, I have a, a kind of bad feelings about Japan. They was trying to kill me. You know, their, their granddads over there were trying to kill me. <laughs> you know, I didn't like that very well. <laughs> what made you choose the Navy? Well, I didn't want to go in the Army, I guess, and uh, and I almost went in the Marines, but I didn't. I'm glad I didn't. Now I had to go down to Detroit to the federal building to enlist, because we go. All of us. It was a bunch. It was a bunch of us. Six of us went together. Yeah. And. Uh, and we know we were going to get we was going to get drafted in a way. Had any of your ancestors been in the service at all? No, I mean not before that. I mean no, no there was no military in my life. Uh, no, you had no ancestors who were in World War One. No, my dad missed that. He my did? dad would knew about the war, but he was about ready to go into service, but he was he missed it, and uh, but uh, and he didn't um, never talk about it because he didn't go in it and so. Did you, I know a lot of people had to get special permission to go into the service at a younger age back no, then. Uh -huh. Were you one of those? Or no, no, they wanted me. You were 18? <laughs> yeah, they wanted me, yeah. When you went in? Yeah, I was 19, really. 19? Uh -huh. I was 19? I was 19 in May, but I was, uh, I went in in February. Okay. Mm -hmm. And where was your first duty station at? I went to uh, Chicago for boot camp. Okay. And I was there about three months, and it was in February, colder than hell. And uh, barracks, it was night, about 100 people in my barracks. And that's where we got all of got our shots and, and uh, uniforms and stuff. And then I was there for three months, and they come in and picked half the class, and we went to New Orleans and to gunnery school. How'd you folks feel about all this? Well, it's something that we had to do. I mean, they worried about me, you know, and, but uh, everybody was doing it, you know, and it was compulsory. 
you know, and we did, you couldn't fight it. I mean, you know, but no, I never knew any of my friends that we were ready to go, you know. Big play the band and everybody was ready to go. The more you got into it, did it get a little more scary for you? Well, I had a lot of scary episodes. I, when the first year, I didn't have too many bad episodes because I was going on the East Coast and I was running from uh, Cartagena, Columbia. I thought it was Venezuela, but I come to find it was Columbia. But that was after you got out of your training. Where yeah. Your boot camp was in Chicago, did yeah. you say? Where did you go from there? And I went to New Orleans for about three months for gunnery service. Okay. And we went out on a ship in the bay there, out of New Orleans. And that's where we took a train on board ship. And we, was on that. we learned about guns, certain kind of guns, and how to do it, how to work them, and shot a lot of shells. And, and uh, it was hot down there, so, but uh, I was there. I think about three or four months. That was the summertime. Did you know what kind of ship you were going to be no, on then? No, and they shipped me to Brooklyn from there. Six of us went together, and they kept us together pretty good. So we all from here, from, from, from Pontiac or Lake Orion, one a couple of Lake Orion. And uh, we went to Brooklyn to a place where, and we stayed there until the ship come in. And all of a sudden, we're on board ship. They come in and say, we want, 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 want you guys. And we was on board ship, and they had taken these peacetime. It was a peacetime tanker, so when the war come, they put guns on them and put a gun crew on there. And there was six guys like me, and and I had a, one officer. And we was separated from them. You don't know about the merchant marines. They run the ship and mm -hmm. everything. Right. And they was all older guys, and we tried to train them guys how to. They put. Four twenty millimeters on there, and one one inch gun on there, and uh, we had we didn't know too much about it ourselves. We we're trying to teach them guys. <laughs> so it almost sounds like kind of a jury rigged <coughs> situation that they had to throw together at the start of the war. Well, yeah. Well, you know, all them ships had to be still carrying oil, and uh, and they was, you know, they they was German subs on the Jersey coast. They claim, you know. And the ship, you know, the Germans that owned the North Pacific, Pacific Ocean, they had all their submarines there. There was a lot of damage done around there. Not particularly around the coast, but the Caribbean was bad. And North Atlantic, when you went up there, they would, they would send uh, maybe 25 ships to, to Russia with supplies, and maybe they'd get five of them there. Yeah. Uh, Bob. This concludes our, our first episode, sitting down and hearing your great story, okay. but I can tell we've got a lot more ground to cover. Well, so I, I hope it's not boring. No, no. I, not at all. We're going to ask our audience to join us for part two on the next episode of My Life with Bob Butler. Mm. There's a lot of history to Oxford. Hidden around every corner, deep in every crack, and sometimes right in front of you, waiting to be discovered. If you just dig a little, you'll find the great history of our beautiful town. Welcome to Historic Oxford.